Genesis 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were together he called the sea. And God saw that it was good, and God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth, was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures, and every living creature that moves, and which the and with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind, and that God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heaven, and over the livestock and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. 
And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is in the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Second Corinthians 13, 11 through 14. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Trinity Sunday Gospel is Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Let's pray. O oh God, we thank you for your word, which is trustworthy and true. We thank you for revealing yourself in your word. We thank you that as we hear your word, you create faith in us. As we confess that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So we ask that as we consider who you are and what it is you have done for us, that you would open your word to our understanding. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to be using the first half of the Athanasian Creed as our statement of confession today, Trinity Sunday. I call it the Trinitarian Confession of the Athanasian Creed, where we look at and confess with the Church Universal the Trinity and try in some way to put into human language what the Trinity is. I can't say it any better than the Creed says it, so I'm not going to expound today on what the Trinity is or you know, try to build a theological basis for the Trinity. I, I do want us to see 
in the text that we have for today, the presence of the Trinity, but more importantly, I would like us to let the Holy Spirit reveal to us the work of God as we see in our texts today. We're going to start with the Genesis text and talk about creation. We're going to then actually move to our Gospel text and look at the commission. And then we're going to finish with our text from 2 Corinthians 13. And, you know, I'm trying to be cute here with, a, with an alliteration. Uh, I want to call it the blessing, but the but blessing starts with B and not with C. So we have creation, commission. I'm going to call it comfort because that word is actually in 2 Corinthians 13 where Paul, as he is inspired by the Holy Spirit, originally wrote to the Christians at Corinth and the Holy Spirit speaks these words to us today having preserved his word for us. He says, comfort one another. So we're going to use that word comfort and see how the Holy, how God, uh, the Trinitarian God, gives us his comfort or his blessing. So we start with the fact that it is God who created. And our scripture begins with that phrase, in the beginning, God. Now, when it says in the beginning, it is not talking about God's beginning, because God has no beginning, but it is talking about the start of time as we know time. And that when God spoke these words and brought everything that exists into existence, time began. But the point here is that it is God who worked in the beginning to bring about everything that is. And so we read the account of the six days, evening to, more to, evening to day, and in, in Jewish culture the day is counted from sunset to sunset. So the day actually begins with the evening, and so there was evening and there was day, and then the first day, the second day, and so forth through the sixth day. And we have all the elements of creation listed for us in the creation account. And then when we get to the second part of the sixth day, God reveals himself to us. And we are seeing here the Old Testament picture of our Trinity. As God refers to himself in the plural. He said... Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. God is not speaking here to angels, because we are not created in the image or likeness of angels. We are created in the image and likeness of God. Now this doesn't mean that we look like God, but it does mean that God has shared with us some of His attributes, some of His characteristics. So we believe that when God made us in His image, He declared Himself us, our image, our likeness. He used the plural about himself, and yet we confess that we have only one God, and so we're pointing ahead then. I believe Genesis chapter 1 is pointing ahead to the full revelation of who God is as Trinity. And that when he shared with us his attributes, he made us perfect, he made us immortal, and he gave us a will. He shared his will with us. When we sinned, we lost those things. 
death came into our world and into our lives, both physically and spiritually. So we lost our immortality. Because we sinned, we lost our perfection. And then our wills became bound. We also notice in the creation account, and it's interesting that uh, it may be controversial in our society to even say this today, that we were created male and female. That God built into the very DNA of who we are, our sex and gender. And that he did that with a very specific purpose. So that the male and the female coming together could reproduce, could increase, could populate the earth. So we begin then our understanding about God's work with creation. With God who identified himself as us and used the pronoun our in the identification of himself. Made us. Made us with a purpose. Made us multiply and fill the earth and in so doing to give honor and glory to him. We jump then to our gospel which is Matthew 28. This is the closing the closing verse. These are the closing verses of Matthew's gospel. Now this is not uh, the ascension account because they weren't in Galilee for the ascension. But they did go to Galilee and they went to a particular mountain in Galilee where Jesus met with his disciples. Maybe it was just a place to get away from, you know, the, now the crowds weren't following Jesus like they had prior to the death and resurrection. But this is following the resurrection and Jesus is meeting with his disciples and encouraging them. And we call these verses the Great Commission. And so we understand from them then that there is greater purpose than physical multiplication from creation, but that there is also a spiritual multiplication that he calls us to. And so as Jesus met with his disciples, and this is prior to the ascension, after the resurrection, he gave them these instructions based on the fact that he had all authority. And so we understand again that Jesus is God. He is not the Father, but He is God. As the Father is God, they are both God. And, and we're going to see also the presence of the Holy Spirit here. But Jesus could only have all authority if He is God. And so based on His authority, then He told His disciples to multiply. The word that he used there was to make disciples. Disciples are followers. Disciples are those who have, by faith, been brought into the fold and been reconciled to God. And in the call to make disciples, that is to multiply those who are followers of Jesus, he told the disciples to do two things. The first thing he told them was to baptize. And here is where we have the Trinity present in the commission. Because he told them to bapt that the first thing about making disciples is to baptize, and that the baptism is in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus then names the three persons of the Trinity into which we are baptized, but it's important for us also to recognize what baptism is. We saw that when sin came into the world, our fellowship with God was destroyed. 
death came in, and so yes, death happens physically, but of greater consequence is spiritual death, which is our separation from God. And the only way for that separation to be healed, the only way for there to be reconciliation and for us to be brought back into fellowship with God is for Jesus to take upon himself the consequences of our sin so that we can be forgiven. And he did that through his death on the cross. Then when we read Romans chapter 6, we see that God then brings us into reconciliation through baptism, which is how he brings us to participate in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And so when we are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our old nature is put to death, and a new nature rises to life, paralleling the death of Jesus on the cross and his burial, followed by his resurrection. So the commission is to make disciples, first by baptizing, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the Trinity's name, and then to teach, some translations say observe, other translations say obey, the same sense of the word there. You can take that word that Matthew used and translate it either as observe or obey. But the idea is that the followers of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus, not only know what Jesus taught, but do what Jesus taught teaching to observe all that I have commanded. So we are created in the image of the triune God. We are created to fill the earth, to multiply and fill the earth. We are created in the image of the triune God, created to multiply spiritually, to make disciples. And in order for us to be able to do that, as we wait for the completion of our reconciliation, the return of Christ, and the being taken back, or the being taken into heaven with Christ in his return, we have the comfort of the Trinity. And so Paul, as he wrote to the Corinthian church, ended his letter, his second letter, with these words, again showing us that this blessing, this comfort from God, uh, this empowering from God to do what he has commanded us to do, is again based on who he is, the Trinity. And so he declares this blessing on us, we can call it a benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we recognize that the only way that we can be reconciled to God and the only way that we can be empowered to obey all that Jesus commanded is because he has been gracious to us in taking upon himself our sin, in dying the death we deserve, and proving his power over sin and death by his resurrection. That's his grace. Forgiving us as we believe that what he did is for us. We receive the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we understand then that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is made possible by the love of God. And here, God, we could substitute the word Father, although Paul used the word God there. But in the list, we have the Lord Jesus Christ, God and the Holy Spirit. So we're seeing God as the Father, but we're understanding again that we do not have three gods, we have one God, 
And so it is this God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who loves us. That does not mean that he condones our misbehavior. He doesn't say to us, oh, do whatever you want, whatever feels good. He says to us, I am giving myself for you. I am sacrificing myself for your good. That's the love of God. And then we recognize that because Jesus is gracious to us, because God and here the Father loves us, then we can have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And that when Jesus returned to heaven, he did not leave us orphans. We saw that in John 17. But he sent the Holy Spirit. He called him the paraclete, the helper, the one who stands in God's court of law as our advocate. But he is also the guarantee of eternal life. He is our teacher. He is the one who holds us and keeps us in the fellowship, having been reconciled to God. And so then we can have this comfort that as we wait for the return, He is with us. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all that you may be fruitful and multiply. Yes, physically, but also spiritually. Making disciples. Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, open your word to our understanding. Continue to give us faith to confess you as Trinity, one God in three persons, three persons in one God. And as disciples, to be about making disciples in the comfort that you offer us because of who you are. We ask this in Jesus' name.